Good morning, this is Deepak. So I'm back in La Jolla in California and I was uh, um, on the road from Los Angeles to here. And therefore, today's podcast is a little delayed, but uh, I thought I would uh, answer today's question. I've changed the headline of the topic, but this... Um, uh, this answer is in response to Vedic Aryan, and uh, he says, Thank you for taking my question. I was honored to find my name in the video from you, and I appreciate the sincerity with which you answered. You said that collapsing of wave particle is not limited to subatomic particles, but also to large objects. Is it empirically proven or just a hypothesis? Can you provide some reference since I have a strong background in engineering and quantum mechanics as well as uh, consciousness, which I inherited from my family um, tree and culture? Okay, first of all, my, I'll answer your question very briefly. Uh, and the answer is that current thinking is that... Um, uh, quantum mechanics works at every level, at uh, microscopic level, but also applies to macro objects, that macro objects are an approximation of um, uh, quantum uh, events that they average out. And so um, you can look this up on Wikipedia. You can ask the same question on Quora and you'll get the general opinion that, um, um, that macro objects follow quantum principles. So let's go beyond that. I want to actually address a more fundamental question. And so I have uh, posed that question right here. Is the world made of objects or of experiences? Is the world made of objects or experiences? And the answer uh, is obvious. You know, everything that you know is a result of experience. Uh, can we separate an object from the experience of it? Can you separate, for example, the seeing of this object from the object? The object as it appears in form, is a result of seeing. And um, the seeing is an activity in a witnessing awareness. And the witnessing awareness um, is actually an aspect of consciousness, of pure consciousness. So it is not possible to separate a form or a color or a shape from the seeing of it. And it is not possible to separate the seeing of it from the witnessing awareness in which that seeing is happening. Now you could apply this principle to any of the five senses. It is not possible to separate what we call a sound from the hearing of it and the hearing of it cannot be separated from the awareness in which the hearing is happening, the silent witness in which that hearing is happening. As I said, you can apply this to a texture, you can apply this to a smell, and you can apply this to a taste. You can apply this to a fragrance, you can apply this to a flavor. So in the end, what we come up with is there is hearing, there is seeing, there is tasting, there is smelling, and there is that experience that we call texture, solidity, softness, etc. These, in turn, are activities of a silent witnessing awareness. They are how awareness knows in a way itself. 
So awareness knows itself through those activities that we call hearing, seeing, feeling, touching, and then it interprets those and that's called thought. So everything that we call reality is in fact a mode of knowing which results from feeling, tasting, touching, smelling, hearing, seeing. You cannot separate that from the witnessing awareness. And therefore, knowing and experiencing are modes of awareness, knowing itself and then objectifying that as a physical world. The physical world is an objectification of experience in awareness. And when I say the physical world is an objectification, I include our own body because our body is experienced in the same way as this object or this object or the object in behind of me. There's no difference in how the body is experienced. And what is the mind? Mind is just the interpretation of that experience which we call thought. So ultimately it's all awareness interacting with itself and then kind of showing up in the world as knower modes of knowing and objects known. Observers uh, modes of observation and objects uh, observed all happening as activities in what we call the self. And what is the self? The self is the source of thought perception, volition. Just stay with that. Don't even have to go further because feeling is also a form of thought. So if we can stick with that, then we realize that this quantum mechanics and classical physics, they're all uh, different models that we have created as human beings to explain modes of knowing and experience. I personally have gone through many stages in myself when I used to say to myself that, uh, you know, quantum mechanics explains reality, but actually it doesn't. Quantum mechanics does not explain reality. So I want everybody to be very clear on this. Quantum mechanics does not explain reality. Nothing explains reality other than the knowing of it in uh, awareness. So chemistry, biology, quantum mechanics, physics, these are actually models that we have created as human beings to explain modes of knowing and experience. Actually, I once asked a cosmologist, uh, astrophysicist, quantum mechanic, mechanics specialist, you might say a, a quantum specialist, cosmologist, ast astronomer, astrophysicist. I said, is, um, is uh, what we call um, biology, is it biochemistry? And he said, of course it is. I said, is biochemistry just chemistry? He said, of course it is. I said, is chemistry then uh, physics? He said, of course it is. Then I asked um, him, is uh, physics quantum mechanics? And he said, yes, of course it is. And then he said, um, is, uh, and then I asked him, is quantum mechanics mathematics? And he said, yes, of course it is. And then I finally asked him, is mathematics an activity in mathematical imagination? And he said, of course it is. And I said, is then imagination an activity in consciousness? And uh, he had no, no choice but to say, yes, it is. So ultimately, no matter what model we use, we end up with consciousness as the fundamental reality that knows itself and experiences itself as form and phenomena that we as humans um, call mind-body universe. 
in the deeper reality, there's no such thing as mind-body universe. Those are human constructs to explain human experiences and modes of knowing in human consciousness. That is it. So, and actually that's very freeing because then you realize you're not a body-mind. The body-mind is a construct that you have uh, created as a result of uh, thousands of years of uh, human conditioning. And you also realize that no, no such thing as a universe, that we actually constructed the idea of a universe. All there is, is a timeless awareness that is eternally um, bubbling up with um, experience and the knowing of experience within itself. And therefore, in the ultimate reality, there's no birth, there's no death, and there is only um, the activity of timeless awareness within itself that is experienced and interpreted as form and phenomena. This is very, very, very freeing because it gets rid of all these constructs, birth, death, etc., even time. So, by the way, um, somebody just notified me that um, 21 people, including many of you, have shared this video with others. Very grateful that you're doing this so we can expand our um, conversation and discover who we are. That's the ultimate quest. You know, even scientists should be asking themselves who or what is it that wants to know? Who or what is it that is wondering? Who or what uh, wants to know itself? Because unless we, we um, ask that question, we'll never actually get to know who we are. And not knowing who we are, we'll keep repeating the constructs that have been uh, there since uh, the beginning of time. Uh, philosophical constructs, theological constructs, religious constructs, scientific constructs, quantum mechanical constructs, mathematical constructs, not asking ourselves what is it in which the construct is created? What is it in which the construct is created? Helen Reed says, what is knowledge? Knowledge in a sense, what we call traditional knowledge, is ignorance because knowledge is all about creating constructs. True knowledge is just the experience of knowing. That's it. You don't have to have a construct around it. And if you do, then you will know yourself that the highest knowledge is self-knowledge. The highest knowledge is self-awareness. Uh, Soraya Zamer says, what are constructs? Constructs are things that we make up. They are concepts. So the body is a concept. Um, the universe is a construct, the mind is a construct. Mary Beverly uh, Byerly asks, is yoga a construct? No, because yoga is just a word that means union and union with the source of thought, union with the source of perception, union with the source of volition. So perception is an experience but it occurs in um, awareness. Now the interpretation of that perception as a body-mind universe is a construct. Okay, so um, a thought uh, creates constructs out of experience. And the experience itself has its source in awareness. So, um, uh, Paula Testoni says, and self is consciousness? Yes, self is consciousness. Consciousness, awareness is the source of thought, perception, volition. It's where all experience occurs, all experience is known, all experience is interpreted, into which all experience subsides. 
and out of which all experience is made. Uh, Jawaraha, our psychology is con con contrast. You mean, you mean construct? Yes, psychology is a construct. Dream life construct quantum. Jan Jansen says, yes, this is a very important point. Time is a construct. You know, I was asking a physicist the other day, I said, is the uh, difference between past, present and future a nanosecond or less? And he said the distance between past, present and future is actually zero, zero. Therefore, time is a construct around a never-ending stream of experiences in an eternal now. Okay, so, um, you know, uh, it was a simple question that was asked um, about quantum mechanics. Does it apply to the classical universe? And the answer is it does apply, but don't worry. Um, um, it's uh, still a construct. Somebody's asking, uh, is psychology a contrast? I never use the word contrast. Construct. Construct. Concept. Yes, Aurora, the difference between past, present, and future is zero. Zero. Therefore, time is a construct. Um, it's a construct. It's an interpretation of the experience of change in a timeless now. Okay? So, that's it for today. Is the universe made of objects? No. The universe is made of experiences. Is our body an object? No. It's an ever-changing experience. Is the mind made up of mental objects called thoughts? Um, no. The mind is a construct um, around the interpretation of experience. What are we when we die? We are the awareness in which uh, the experience of birth and death are um, interpretations of uh, sensations, images, feelings and thoughts. Jawahara experiences vibration. Vibration is a construct. See, this brings us to a very fundamental saying that um, reality cannot be expressed in words. As soon as we created words, we created constructs. Brings us back to this beautiful expression of Rumi. God's language is silence. Everything else is poor translation. So, I think I'll end here. Paola Testoni, though, asks, is consciousness energy? No, energy is the interpretation of an experience in consciousness. Theo asks, is the observation is infinite? I think you mean, is the observer infinite? Yes, the observer is infinite. Paula Diana says, am I alive or am I dead? You're always alive as awareness. Uh, aliveness is the continuum of the experiences that we call birth and death. Okay, birth and death are, are the continuum of what we call life. Birth is not the opposite of life. Birth is the opposite of death, and death is the opposite of life. Katrina Brown, the observer is the true being. Yes, the observer is the true being. But the observer being formless is uh, not located in space-time, and therefore is eternal and timeless, and not subject to birth um, and death. Rhoda Auerbach, when I'm not the ego, yes. When you're not the ego, then you are real. Phaedra, does in this world but not of this world go against this theory or with it? 
<laughs> it's not what I'm talking about is not theory I hope yes we are um, we are in this world and not of it is another way of saying we are non-local beings having a local experience we are invisible beings having an experience in the world of form and phenomena we are uh, formless beings um, um, having the experience of form and phenomena okay there are some good questions Zoraida is saying this awareness that we are does this evolve it evolves as experience and understanding awareness by itself is infinite Lisa, so experience is what is apparently real, the witness is what is ultimately real. You got it, Lisa. Absolutely. Okay, so you know, this is a very interesting forum. There were a few of us are totally kind of in sync while the rest of the world goes about its business as biological robots. And I'm not saying this with disdain, I'm just saying this with a certain sense of sorrow. Does my reality affect my child's reality? Reena, Bindra, yes it does. Your child is an extension of yourself. Okay, till tomorrow. This is Deepak, take care.